So I'm gonna start with this Redemptor Dreadnought as kind of a primer. Hoping the camera's set up all right. It's like right on my chest, <laughs> but hopefully it'll work out. Uh, this is one of my favorite kits. I'm a big fan of the Imperial Knight. This kit is amazing. The posability you get with it, the ease of build, the fact that you don't need to magnetize anything, like all these arms, they just pop in and out. They're, they're, the tolerance on these is so strong uh, that even the front chest parts literally just stay in. Don't even need to magnetize. It's amazing. A missile pod just stays in. So I'm going to start by priming this. I'm going to do this as an Imperial Fists Redemptor. Uh, but I built it in sub-assemblies, so the arms still come off. That way it's easier to prime stuff. So I use this Vallejo Surface Primer. And it uh, lasts a long time. It's a little thick, though. So I usually put in... Here, I'll show you. It depends on how much you need. But I'll kind of show the pot if I can. So I always put just a just a bit in. Just a little. Um, it's probably gonna take more than that on this model. And then I always take a little bit of Vallejo Flow Improver. You can see I get this from Noble Knight Games. But some Flow Improver. And just like three or four drops. There we go. And I always recommend that you keep some toothpicks on hand. I actually got for Christmas from my fiance, I got a uh, toothpick dispenser. Like uh, one of the stainless steel ones from like a, uh, a restaurant. All right, and it's gonna get loud here. I'm probably gonna mute the audio for this point, but you can kind of gauge, you know, how far I hold the model away and how much primer I put on. Uh, the nice thing is to move around as you prime. That way, when you finish the section, it's mostly dry by the time you come back to it. But here goes the volume, because this is for my airbrush booth. That's what this whole area is. I can even move up. You can see the airbrush booth and its filters. We got more models over there, but that kind of does it. That gives you an idea of how how much I've got this involved. I don't want to die from you know lung cancer. That's all done. I'm gonna go over a few things before we actually get started on the real work. Uh, first thing is switching paints. Now I do a lot of painting and the easiest thing to keep around is just a dirty rag. That's all you need. Uh, make sure I'll spray down here just so you see it all come out. Yep, and then you just take that, just put your finger on it and then just wipe out all the excess paint. There you go. And then I keep a bottle. This is not cleaner. It is literally like 10% cleaner and then 90% water. And that's what I use to dunk the, the whole airbrush and to also spray out the old paint. So uh, just one thing you need to note when you do that is uh, there tends to be a little more of this left in than you think because it'll run down the sides of the inside of the bowl. So make sure you spray a little extra, see? There, some more came out. All right. So now I'm gonna put it together and kind of talk through my plans here. So, like I said, it was in some assemblies. I'm gonna do the weapons completely separate. And now here, some of the paint is gonna like, chip, the primer is gonna chip off, I'm sure. Because as I said, the tolerances are crazy on these models. But I'm okay with that. Um, I'll, when I glue it, it's gonna be the same. So this is just makes it easier to paint later on. So there we go. Kind of want to get this in the pose that I want. That makes sense. Um, I think kind of there, the arm out. I can always just take my time and like attach one of these guns to get a feel for where I want everything. Do I want it forward? Do I want it to the side like that? I think like that. So now I know. 
Cool. So I'm gonna put everything to the side over here. And then I've got a few colors. Now, this is kind of my, my template for this one. We're gonna do the whole thing in a Vallejo Model Air. This is actually a golden yellow. This is the old color name. It, the number is still correct. So if you go Vallejo Model Air 7178, you should be able to find it. And then I'm gonna do some Vallejo, Vallejo Model Air wood as an accent. And then my highlight is gonna be Flash Kits yellow. It's a very, very bright yellow. It does tend to cover things really easily, really quickly. So just be careful. And then here's here's kind of the uh, the look that I'm going for. I've already done this Imperial Fist. Uh, he turned out really good. Let's see if I can focus on him. There we go. He turned out great. Uh, the color gradient is really subtle. I don't like the nice clean armors. I want them all dirty and grimy. So that's what he's gonna look like. I don't know if I'm gonna do any red on the Redemptor, but we'll see. All right. Now, I want to talk through this, so I'm just going to put a mask on and then uh, leave the airbrush filters off because there's not a lot of primer in the air. So I'm going to start, like I said, with this yellow, this golden yellow. Just going to put it in the pot off camera. And I'm just going to focus on the armor panels. A lot of this Redemptor does, has color, but not on the panels, so any of them, like, parts here, the back panels, stuff like that won't have any color. So, I know it's over black. Uh, you can do white and then black and then go with the yellow, but I just want to do the yellow. I don't want it too bright and I'm going to darken it up later anyway. So yes, you will get the color in places you don't want it, but we'll paint all over all that anyway. Our focus right now is all on the airbrushing to make sure that the color looks right on those panels because it's easier to get the color to look natural with the airbrush than it is with a standard paintbrush. And like I said, I'm doing this over these entire panels. You won't see any color gradient until later. And it is also on the toes. The only downside to, to airbrushing like this is once you're done, you have to be really sure in your skills, otherwise one bad brush stroke can mess up the whole thing. Fortunately, it's not that bad because you can easily use some weathering techniques to cover up any big mistakes. Well, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of going gently it goes on pretty thick, especially over the black, but it doesn't have to be an overall coverage for this first coat. It just has to be. If you wanted to, it's actually really easy. You could just leave the arms off completely and use the paint them up as uh, size of the emperor. So another chapter I'll be doing eventually. But for now, just the imperial fists. Don't forget the top and sides of these back panels. I just noticed that. These back panels here, don't forget the top and sides, whatever you can see. Don't worry so much about the bottom. See, it's already starting to look good. All right, I'm gonna finish airbrushing this coat and then I'll come back. Now, <laughs> I decided, so I, I went through a couple processes. I actually decided to remove the arms again. And then I, because I have to touch this to take them off, I just cut off the little um, little pieces on the inside that actually hold it on, because I'm just gonna glue the arms on. So that way I can just stick them in so I know where the pose is. And we're switching to wood this time. This is uh, model layer number 77. And it's uh, like a nice reddish, uh, more like orangish, yellowish brown. It's weird. But we're going to focus so you can see my glove here. I'm making sure I know how much is coming out. All right, so I apologize here. I actually lost the recording for the, the starting part. And uh, 
for the Vallejo model or wood, I just cut a clip here so you can see. The, the wood is on, on kind of like the back edges and the underside. So you can kind of see like the top of that panel, the like sides uh, towards the middle of those vents on the back between the toes. Um, you just kind of get a feel. Uh, definitely look at the showcase video to, to see the reference. Uh, and again, I apologize. And this next part, I switched to a flash so gets yellow. Just the raised areas. And again, the white glove helps because I know how much is coming out. Quite a lot more is coming out than I want. So I want to check the tip. Make sure the tip's clean. I don't have a small needle on this, so I'm not worried about bending the needle as much. So if I had a 0.35 or a 0.2, I'd be a lot more worried, but this is a 0.5. See that? It just adds that little bit, and you can see the gradient there. Uh, just be careful, it does come out pretty quick sometimes. So hold it a little further away. And I want to get this main panel right here because it's pretty obvious. There. Just like that. And it dries a little different. So this will be pretty bright, but also a lot more realistic. And a lot of areas you don't even need to bother hitting. The spots that are way underneath, like this panel here, I didn't even hit that. Uh, the toes you want to hit though, just a little bit on each. Maybe the bottom of this, yeah, bottom of that. Uh, definitely the tops of the toes. Uh, definitely and absolutely the top of this right here. That's a part that's gonna catch eyes. Remember, this is um, dynamic lighting, so uh, right here, see where the where the color changes from dark to light? We want it here, but we don't want to affect this darker part here, so I just got to be careful. I'm going to tilt it there, and lightly do it there, on top here. And this may seem a bit bright, but when we weather it up and do our, our wash especially, you'll notice a big change. And the wash I'm not gonna do until the very last once I've done all the metallics, because it'll add to those as well. Just a little bit, there we go. There is the yellow part of our Redemptor done. Really easy, but it looks really great in person. And of course, like I said, I don't like it all nice and pretty, so we're gonna do the rest of the painting and then we're gonna hit it up with a nice oil wash. And we're back and here he is mostly done. He actually is a lot darker yellow in person, uh, but you can kind of get the gist. He won't really pop until I get the oil wash done on him. So you can see, I just did the basic metals, hardly any detail on anything. That's gonna come out with the oil wash and then the weathering. But to do that, I have to first apply this stuff. Testers Model Master Lusterless Flat. It's a clear lacquer, it dries really quickly. It's got alcohol in it, so that's why it evaporates so quick. And the reason I have to do that is because the oil wash uses mineral spirits, which will dissolve paint. Now, it's not very strong, so I have done it without putting the lacquer on and it's fine. Um, but if you layer on the, the oil wash pretty thick, it really will take the paint off. So here, I'm going to spray this in the booth really quick. All right, for this part, I'm going to use a burnt umber oil paint. I got this from Blick Art Materials here in the United States, but you can get it from any traditional art store. Just make sure it's a burnt umber oil paint. Any size will work. Uh, I'm not going to need a lot, so I'm... Just bear that in mind. You just need one tube. And then I've got a little container of mineral spirits. This is just a regular tester's container, but you can get mineral spirits at hardware stores. And then you're gonna need just a really big wash brush. This is just a regular brush, nothing crazy. Um, the oil wash is actually pretty thin when you get to it, but I'm, I'll show you here in a second. So I've got just a styrofoam little 
bowl. So you just put a little bit in. Close that up. And then I'm gonna take the mineral spirits right out of the pot here. And I'll show you how I mix it. All right. So I've got the whole brush filled and then I kind of dab that. It'll create a pool over there. And then I just grab a little bit, add it to the pool. A little bit more, add it to the pool. That way you can control how thick your oil wash is. We actually want it pretty thin. There we go. It's more wet than it is anything else. I'll do it to one of these panels here. Make sure my focus is right. There we go. There you go, it's just darkening it up. That's what I want. I don't want it nice and pretty. I want it dark and old and grimy. And you see it's pooling in certain spots. I'll do a shoulder pad too. Which just really darkens it up, makes it a nice old metal. Like he's actually in combat for a while. And it'll dry, and it'll dry pretty light actually, when it does. So depending on how detailed you want it, you can actually do more than one coat once it dries. That was the whole point of the, I'm doing all the feet here too, see that? Now if you wanted a little more weather worn, you could go for like a rust, so like an orange in an oil. But mostly, this is for metals. So you're gonna put a lot on these metals. One thing I noticed here after recording is you can actually take your hand or a clean cloth and wipe off any of the streaks you might get. Sometimes when you mix the oil paint, it is a little too thick and you'll get some particles, especially at the bottom of panels and stuff. Uh, you can easily wipe that away before the oil paint dries. And fortunately, it does take a little while to dry. So you've got some time to make sure it looks right. Like there's streaks on the front, you can easily remove those just with a cloth. All right, I'm back and the oil wash is mostly dry. But some spots that are drying a little bit, but you can see I started weathering it already. But before I do that, I wanna make sure I get decals on there. So I'm gonna set him aside. I've just got this like sandwich bread container for like school lunches. And that's what I use to soak my decals. So I just keep a, a bottle of water with some tap water in it uh, to fill not only my uh, my brush rinse, but for this. So you just dump a little in there. I have to get the sponge wet. And then I'm gonna cut the decals to size. Now the key to this is not just a good palette, but it is Microsol. That's what I use for applying decals. And then you also need and you can see I've marked it with some tape. A nice, flat, clean brush. That's the biggest key. So I'm actually gonna do two Imperial Fist decals. I don't normally do that, but I kinda like the big one and I kinda like the small one too. So I'm going to, sorry, I'm cutting out the big one here. Once you cut it out, we can easily just drop it onto the plate here. There we go, let it soak. And the same with this one, but I'll just apply the big decal here to show you. It should be completely soaked. So I'm gonna dip my brush in Microsol, get a good amount on there. And Microsol is used for not just applying decals, but making sure they go on smoothly. So I'm gonna just cover this as much as I can, the whole panel reason for that is sometimes it'll pick up the material underneath or the, the minerals in the water and leave like a watermark and that's more uniform if you do it over the whole panel so that's why I do that all right there we go there you go that's on there make sure I line it up and as you can see it is forming uh, if you need to get some more microsol on your brush and just apply it until it conforms to the surface. Sometimes you will also have to let it dry a little bit and then come back and work on it. 
rather than just leaving it. So I'm actually going to do this panel too. I'm going to do the Legion numbers. There we go. Got that applied. And one final one. Not necessary, but I wanted something over here. Could have done a skull, maybe an X. But I kind of like this. There we go. There we go. All three applied. Sad, you might have to let it dry. You can see how it's. Let me see if I can zoom in here. There. You can see how it's kind of like bubbling on the edges. That will go away once it starts to dry, but it's it's a flat piece of basically a piece of plastic that is trying to adhere to a curved surface. So it's having a hard time. It'll get there. So we'll let it dry a little bit, and then once it's more mostly dry, then you can still kind of work it until it's completely flat. There we go. Now I am going to let that dry, and I'll get into the weathering here in a second. So the decals are set. Uh, you can see a little chip came out. That's okay, I'll weather it after that. And I decided that it is Imperial Fists. I don't particularly like the laurel wreaths on them, but this uh, right, sorry, right on my right, left shoulder pad is a little bare, I guess. So I'm gonna be a little brave. Do some freehand. So, to do a freehand laurel wreath is actually really easy. It's literally just a semicircle and some leaves on it. So I'm going to use two paints. I'm going to use Caliban Green, don't mind my air compressor. And then I'm going to use some Warpstone Glow on top of that. So let's see if I can do this without completely messing up. So I'm going to start right about here. And I'm being careful. It's like any art, it just takes practice. If you can't do it here, you decide you don't want to be brave like me, that's totally fine. Just get a piece of paper figure out kind of the same size you want it and go from there. Just practice over and over. See, pretty even, not quite. Here's the nice thing, because the general shape just has to be even. There we go. Cool. All right. Now that's done, I've got to add the leaves. So I just rinse my brush really quick. Make sure I don't have too much paint on it. And you make as many leaves as you want. Doesn't really matter. They can be really leafy, they can be thorny, it literally doesn't matter. They can be even, they can be not even. A lot of these leaves look a little too thorny, but that's all right. I'll survive. There we go, not horrible. Now you can see the, the key isn't so much the look as the layering. So I'm gonna take that moot green, or sorry, warpstone glow. And I'm gonna apply that strategically here.
I don't want to get rid of that dark green, but I want to give it a little more, you know? And the nice thing too about doing a small freehand like this is if you do decide to weather, you can cover up any of the mistakes you made in the freehand, which is what I'll do. <laughs> but like you can see, it's turning out pretty good. Could use a little practice. I think it doesn't look so much the laurel wreath as uh, some a crown of thorns, but. There we go. Well done. Not bad. I'll zoom in a little bit. You guys can probably see it. It's in 4K. There we go. Not bad. Adds a little bit to the dreadnought, I think. So I'm going to go straight into that from that to the weathering. Uh, this is one of my favorite types of weathering. I do about three, four different types, not including the oil washes. Uh, the biggest thing is a sponge, but not just any sponge, the right sponge. A lot of regular sponges like you get at a store don't have a small amount, like the bubbles that make the foam are too big. So you don't get that fine detail. So pluck foam from battle foam cases is perfect. Uh, if you have a friend that has it for his army, absolutely use it. Uh, Pelican cases for camera equipment, stuff like that all has it. So you just tear out a chunk at like an angle to make a, to make a wedge. And then we're gonna use some, there it is, some Rhinox hide. Oop, there we go. And you're gonna just dab a little bit on there. I'll kind of demonstrate on my hand here in a second. So you dab a little bit on the corner and then make sure you don't have too much. You can see the way it goes. I sprayed some yellow from the Imperial Fist on there, but just a spattering. And then you're gonna wanna hug the corners. So like here. You can go easy, you can go hard. The harder you push, the more you'll do. Like here, I wanna like scrape. There you go. It covers up that, that decal piece that's missing. But you don't have to go on every surface. But I'm not a fan of the, the GW putting a line on everything. This is a really great alternative to that. It's quick, it looks great. And it does not take a lot of skill. There you go. So that's what I'm doing for that. If you want to add a little bit more, you can see here I kind of I painted a line of uh, metal. You can use a silver or just a bulk on metal for that. But that's it for the weathering. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna cover this up a little bit. I'm gonna hit a big part here. There you go. There you go. I hit that really easily and on the fingers. Make it look like he's punched a lot of people. But that's it. I'll go around. And uh, when I come back, I'll start showing you guys the uh, base. Once that's done, I'll do the OSL on the, the plasma cannon. And that's pretty much it. All right, see you in a bit. I'm gonna do OSL on the plasma. You can see I've already weathered it. I just did the same sponge technique with just a metal. Now, it's a combination of three paints. So, base coat is Vallejo Game Air Magic Blue. And then we're gonna follow that up with Vallejo Game Air Electric Blue and then just a straight white. Dead white's a pretty good white. I have other favorites, but this one's good. All right, let's get started. With the first layer, don't be afraid to get a little bit further out and hit the edges. So there we go. This is the color you're mostly going to see. So there you go. You can actually be fine being done like that, but I'm not. So I'm going to switch to the other side.
There we go. Doesn't have to be crazy big, but I want it to be enough. And if you you can go bigger than that, but I don't want it. I want it more subtle, you know. Switch to the Game Air Electric Blue. I'm going to go more in the middle, so right up and down the center. There we go. It's very subtle. Sorry, trying to make sure the lighting is good so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. It's very subtle. You'll see it more in the showcase video on the on the desk for Dreadnought. Now the same principle, but just a very small amount of the white. There we go. Well done, you can really see it there. Well done. That's what it looks like on the actual Redemptor. Pretty cool. It's really subtle, but it works really, really well. Now that he's done, for the most part, I'm going to switch to the base. and I'm going to use some Astro Granite Debris. It's a GW Technical Paint. It's really a basing material more than anything. Uh, normally I would do a mixture, but this is just a one-off, so I'm just going to layer that on here. Uh, you can get a little bit over the toes like he's actually trudging through stuff, but try not to layer it on too thick. If you want to add some rocks, maybe a dead chaos, marine, anything like that, you totally can. I'm just going to make this guy's base pretty bare. I'll add some shrubbery and stuff. I was going to do like a rubble. But I think this one, I'm just going to go pretty simple. That being said, I will make it so that it can fit in with any rubble terrain bases. Uh, a good base for this too is like the Sector Mechanicus bases. You can even go so far as to take some of the kit from that same range and like cut up bits and pieces. Probably fast forward this part until it's done. All right, so he's mostly done. I let the base dry and then I actually took a sepia wash. Uh, let's see where it is. It's over here. Uh, it's one of my favorite washes, Seraphim Sepia from GW. I just put that all over once the, the terrain dried. And now you can see it's a nice, like, gray earth, uh, but it, I've lost a lot of detail. So I'm going to do a dry brush of Mechanicus Standard Gray. It's a very dark gray, but it's still brighter than what you would get. And you can see I've got, this is actually the top to my, I've even got a paper clip stuck to it. It's the top to my, uh, was it reservoir? My paint reservoir for water, for cleaning brushes. And I use that because I never put the top on. <laughs> so this is the great, a great dry brush palette. And it's great because you can kind of go out from there. So I want to really control how much is on here. So I'm going to get a lot because I want the bristles covered. But I need to get most of it off. So by the time I get further out, it's mostly gone. You can even see on my hand, not much. All right, I'm just going to use that to hit the tops of the rocks here. It keeps the, basically what this does is it keeps the, the recessed details still there. But to, does a little bit of an accent to the top rocks. So make sure you try to avoid the feet here. If you get it on, it's not too bad. Uh, what you might have to do if you get too much on is kind of rub the feet a bit more so that uh, it looks like he's just really walked through the dirt and grime. Kind of use a mistake. Mistakes are great sometimes. They give you an effect you weren't planning on. Uh, and you just gotta keep in mind how you're gonna fix that mistake because you can't really repaint the feet. <laughs> Alright, so that's good. Just a little bit more detail. Now I'm going to switch to a brighter one. Now one thing to bear in mind when you dry brush, uh, you do have to rinse your brush between colors, but when you do that, it makes it so that uh, your brush is wet and that's the last thing you want when you do dry brushing is a wet brush. So I'm going to rinse this, give it plenty of time to dry, dab it with a cloth, paper towel, something like that. Just make sure it's really dry before you start the next step. It 
is this is administratum gray from also from GW if you find yourself doing a big army and you want a lot of color just go to a regular craft store you do not need nice thinly ground pigment in these paints this is a dry brush it doesn't really matter so you can just get a dark shade of gray and a light shade of gray and just get them in a big bottle for a couple dollars at Walmart or a regular craft store all right this is where you're gonna see the detail I'm gonna take that off so You can go a little thicker on this if you want to. Just kind of gauge for yourself you know how much you're putting on. You won't see this so much here just because my lighting is a little weird. But when you get this, uh, when I do the showcase for YouTube, you'll really be able to see it. And you can go a little bit further on the next step and do some white, but it's hard to control the white, so I would just leave it, to be honest. Uh, there we go. Dry brushing is all done. Nice dark earth. But he's done for the most part. I'm just going to do a black edge to the base and do the showcase, but he's done. So there you go. One completed dreadnought. Thank you guys so much for watching. The showcase will be up on YouTube. And there should be a link to Patreon from there. But thank you guys so much for watching.